Hey teens, I hope you're excited. I hope you are surviving this time. And I'm sure it is not exactly what you expected when you thought getting out of school for a couple of weeks, and this is gonna be awesome, especially when your teachers create a whole um, amount of, of schoolwork for you to have to be done, have tests and quizzes still to, you know, to make up. I was texting one of the teens uh, last week and he said, hey, I'm in the middle of doing schoolwork. And I, I said, I do not believe that, not at all. And he said, no, seriously, I am. I'm, I'm actually doing this. I was like, I do not believe you. Uh, it doesn't matter what you say. I still, I know you as a person and I don't believe you. Uh, but I hope this time is, um, has been good for you. And I hope that you're able to um, build upon the time that we have together here in just a couple minutes. Last time we, we spoke, we talked about three major influences in everyone's life, um, but especially about the life of the teenager. I'm um, talking about our spiritual life. Um, our social life and our home life, and we think of when we think of home, we don't think necessarily it's not that physical location in which we sleep or eat. Um, even though we do do that, our home is that family um, system that God has given us and has put us together, and that home is what Satan wants to attack. He wants to make it unusable. He wants to destroy it. And how do we know this? Um, this is our memory verse that we're going to use today, and we're going to memorize this for the next couple of days. Um, and it starts out, it's 1 Peter chapter number 5, verses 8 and 9. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. In verse number 9, the Bible says, whom resist steadfast. In the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And we're going to break down these two verses today and give you four simple thoughts, a challenge for you today that we can work on. And let's look at this first verse. Uh, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And my son, he's one. And he likes to make a lion sound. And his lion sound is, Rawr! But it's also the same sound that he does for a tiger and a bear and a dinosaur and every carnivorous or predatory animal. But the Bible depicts the devil as a lion that's not like the picture that we have, maybe the lions in the zoo, that's harmless, that it can't reach us. But it's actually quite the opposite. The Bible says as a roaring lion, he's walking about, seeking whom he may devour. And when we think of the word devour, we think of something that has changed, that it will no longer be the same as it was beforehand. What's left after he's done isn't the same before. And that's his plan for you, and that's his plan for me as well, that he wants to devour us. So what can we do to protect that? What can we do so that we can have... Um, a, a right victory, and we can't have a Christian life that honors God. So we're going to talk about four things real quick today. Number one is to be serious. Is to be serious. And Satan's not playing around. And he's out to destroy you, and he's out to destroy me. He's out to destroy our, our moms and our dads, our grandmas, our grandpas, aunties, uncles, brothers, sisters, our pastor. It, man, he's, he's out to attack and destroy any and every believer that he can. He's out to destroy all of us. So how serious are we going to be, number one, about our spiritual life? About our spiritual life. We just heard uh, Brother Phil Rabin at the Midwinter Youth Conference there in Evans, Evansville, Indiana. And I was, I, I was so excited. I saw the other day that he had posted... Um, a challenge to his teenagers to join him on the YouVersion Bible app on a seven-day devotional. And I just thought, man, that's exciting. Yes, let's do that. And teenagers, I hope you are, um, are doing some sort of, of walking in God's Word. We talked the last time about downloading that YouVersion Bible app or downloading another Bible app and reading the Bible, reading it with friends, reading it with mom or dad or auntie or granny, whoever it is, but reading that with somebody else and being accountable to that. The Bible says that God's word is our spiritual food. It's nourishment to the soul. So we must be serious about our spiritual life. Number two, we must be serious about our social life. 
Proverbs 13, 20 says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be what? Shall be destroyed. Shall be destroyed. The people that we hang out with will determine a lot about us. Will determine a lot about us. Um, if we hang out with those who are constantly doing wrong and and not abiding by God's law and God and God's rule and and the commandments that He has put in His Word, then chances are that we're not going to do the same either. We must be serious about number three about our home life. What is our attitude about the parents and the authority that we have? I understand that every circumstance is different. And we didn't choose the parents that we have. And the situation that you're in, maybe you live with granny and grandpa. Maybe you live with, with auntie and uncle. Maybe you live with you know, just mom or just dad or uh, mom and dad at home. But have we accepted them as the gifts that God has given us to help us grow and to be more like him. Number two, we must be suspicious. Number two, we must be suspicious. Number one, be serious. Number two, we must be suspicious. We as Christians must come to realize that Satan's on the loose. Right now he's walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's lurking in the most unsuspected places to destroy us. Maybe he's waiting for us on that social media platform. Maybe when we hit that little you know, search icon, something will pop up as we're just browsing, we're just idling through social media. Maybe it's that Netflix show that has that R rating or that TVMA rating that we know we shouldn't watch, but we're going to anyways. Maybe it's that movie rental. Maybe it's that conversation with, you, with your friend um, that you know you shouldn't be having. Whatever it is, we must be suspicious. Ephesians 5.15 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And we walk about being suspicious that, that he's trying to attack us. Number three, we must be submissive. Maybe you're thinking, what? I mean, how? I mean, you just told me to be serious. You told me to be suspicious. How am I going to be submissive? And who am I going to be submissive to? This kind of goes back to James chapter number four, verse number seven. The Bible says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That when we submit ourselves to God, we then we are resisting Satan's attacks. And there can be no resisting of Satan in our own power because we are too weak. Ryan is too weak. Pastor's too weak in his own strength. You and I as, as believers, we're too weak. We cannot handle Satan's vices by our by ourselves. We're too weak. We must fear sin. We must flee from Satan. We must be submissive to what God has for us and depend on him to keep us safe. One of the things that I pray every day is found from the Bible. And you know, God deliver me from um, evil, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Today I want to be used by you, and I don't want to fall into temptation. I don't want to be led astray. Number four, the last one, is to be steadfast. When you think about our verse, um, the Bible says, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We must be steadfast. We must be consistent. We must not give up. We must keep doing the right thing. We must, we must be continually, you know, small steps all the time, growing in our faith. Growing in our faith. That's the last part of the verses together. And I'm going to show this to you. The last part of our verses say, um, The same afflictions accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. That you're not the only one who is struggling. That you're not the only one that, this, that the devil is fighting and trying to attack. He's trying to attack me daily. He's trying to attack you. He's trying to attack your parents and your auntie and your uncle, your grandma, granty. Uh, grandma and grandpa, he's trying to attack them daily and at all times during the day. So that's why we must be, number one, serious. Number two, we should be suspicious. Number three, submissive to what God has for us. And number four, we should be steadfast. We should be continually doing the things that we know are right. This verse is, or this set of verse, you know, 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9, I hope that you work on it. I hope that you look it up. All right, send me or send Miss Brittany a text or even a video of you quoting it. Come on, let's do it. Let, let's do it. Let's 
Let's quote these verses, memorize these verses, you know, and send it to us. And before we leave today, I want to take some time and I just want to, I want to pray. I want to pray for a couple of things. Number one, given the circumstances, um, I think we should pray for those who are sick um, with the coronavirus, the COVID-19. Number two, we should pray for those who are treating those who are sick. Those who come into contact every day, nurses and, and those emergency personnel and people who are essential personnel on our grocery stores and our gas stations and, and those who are constantly you know, working in and around this environment. Number three, let's pray for those who um, are without jobs right now, that um, given the job that they, that they work at, you know, had to be closed down for, for a reason. Number four, let's pray for our pastor in our church. And I can't wait to get back and we see everyone together. I'm so excited. Um, you know, just maybe in a couple of weeks that we'll be able to do that. But whenever that time comes, I can't wait to be with you. But let's encourage each other. Let's pray for one another. Let's call someone up and tell them, hey, I just want to let you know that I was thinking about you. And I can't wait to see you again here at church. And number four, let's pray. I'm sorry, number five. Let's pray for the rest of our teenagers. Those who um, aren't able uh, maybe to to see the live stream, aren't able to see this video, let's pray for them and their families as well. Let's take a moment just to pray real quick, and then uh, we'll let you go. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for an opportunity to grow and to learn um, and to uh, be molded to be like your son, the Lord Jesus. Father, we think about the devil. We think about sin. We think about um, hindrances to doing what you have. Uh, what you want for us. Uh, Father, I, I truly believe that we desire um, to do what's right. Would you help us to remember these verses found in 1 Peter of how our adversary, the devil, how he's walking about as a roaring lion and he's seeking whom he may devour. Would help us to be serious, not take it for granted the, the, the homes that you've given us, the relationship you've given us with, with friends, um, or the opportunity to, to grow in you. Father, I pray that, you, that we would also be suspicious, that we would uh, be weary, and that, that, we'd be watch, er, that we'd be watching for um, Satan's attacks. Number three, Father, I pray that we would be submissive to what you have for us on a daily basis. Things that we know to do is right, honoring our, our fathers and our mothers and those authorities you place um, you know, with, within our, our home life there. Father, we also pray that we would be steadfast, that we would continue daily, step by step, following after you. Thank you for this opportunity to make this video for our teenagers. Lord, thank you for, thank you for saving us. Thank you for giving us a reason to live and to hope. Father, not everyone in the world knows that. They don't have that. We pray for those who are sick right now. With this virus, I pray that you would um, heal their bodies. Thank you for the gift of modern medicine. We pray that you would use those doctors and those who are treating these patients. Give them the wisdom. Give them the, the know-how and also the medicine to be able to treat those. Father, we pray for those who are without jobs right now. Would you give them that income that they need? Help them um, to, to trust in you. But would you also provide there so that they can provide for their families? Father, we think about pastor in our church, and those as we cannot gather together, would you help us to encourage each other you know, as believers, as Christians? Would you give pastor wisdom to know what decisions to, to make daily? Father, we also pray for the teenagers of Shawnee Baptist Church in our community, that you would help us to encourage each other to do what's right, to live for you, to be molded like your son, the Lord Jesus. We love you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, teens. Hey, work on these verses. Get back with me. I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait to see these the videos, and uh, and we'll we'll post them shortly. All right, love you guys.